almost all the grapes in America are grown in California. Such a powerful industry requires great amounts of labor. Today, almost 90% of farm workers are Latino. They have worked these fields for decades, and their stories through generations tell us about sacrifice and hope. Latino farm workers worked unimaginably long hours just to feed their families. They live at the fringes of society. They were paid meager wages and suffered the worst working and living conditions. It was a sad reality. These people had no voice. Cesar Chavez was an organizer. He was an idealist. I would use the word courage. So that's the one word I would use, and he would be a lifelong organizer. Cesar was a great organizer against tremendous odds. He formed the first union of farm workers. He stood up at a time in America where standing up was not a popular thing to do. I use the word organizer because it requires someone to be strategic, to think and to plan not only what's going to happen today, but what's going to happen throughout the rest of his, you know, one's life mm -hmm. and the way he thought beyond his lifetime. He was a visionary, a man who never forgot his roots about working men and women, especially farm workers. It took a lot um, for, um, for an individual like himself and others that stood up at a time in which um, Mexicans were not considered significant in our society. Cesar Chavez was born on March 31st, 1927, near Yuma, Arizona. As a child, he was one of these farm workers. He spent most of his young life moving around the state with his family in search of temporary farm work. During this time, he witnessed many injustices that his fellow farm workers endured. He yearned for change and hoped for a better future for his people. In 1962, Cesar Chavez left his job and set out to achieve his dream to help migrant farm workers in California. Chavez believed that nonviolence was the most effective manner to accomplish social justice. He was a true servant leader, devoted to his cause. My definition of leadership is um, the ability to galvanize and inspire others toward a goal. Lead by example, that's leadership. Be consistent on issues, sometimes they're controversial. Dr. Martin Luther King once said that you don't weigh the ultimate measure of a man on how he stands in times of comfort and convenience but how he stands in times of challenge and controversy. Uh, to be a true leader, be to create a culture that is working towards peace and justice, again, not just for the moment, but for a lifetime. And that leader should be humble, but make people believe that the community that they're organizing with, that they're doing the work, and that they're not at the forefront taking all the credit. I think a number one leader has to be a visionary, someone that sees, uh, you know, let's say sees, you know, into the future, but a person that has the big picture in mind. And I think second is to make sure that um, he's able to understand that it requires a team to accomplish goals. And then third, I would say, uh, individual must have strength. When we're truly honest with ourselves, we must admit that our life is all that really belongs to us. So it is how we use our lives that determine what kind of man we are. It is my deepest belief that by giving of our life that we find life, and that the truest act of courage and the strongest act of manliness is to sacrifice, sacrifice ourselves. Cesar Chavez was directly inspired by the work and philosophies of Martin Luther King Jr. and Mahatma Gandhi, who all believed in the power of nonviolence to bring about social change but it took great determination to organize farm workers and inspire them to support the movement as they lived in constant fear. The major obstacle blocking Chavez's plans was the National Labor Relations Act of 1935, which allowed workers in any industry, except farmers, to form unions. Against these odds, Chavez was determined to make a change. In 1962, he founded the National Farm Workers Association as a social service and credit union for migrant farm workers. After gathering support, the association united with the affiliated Filipino Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee to form the United Farm Workers. 
the UFW started the Delano Grave Strike and boycott against the Ernest and Julio Gallo Wine Company. This effort was meant to bring social justice to the farm workers hired by this company. As years went by, people's respect for Chavez grew. Farm workers and many other supporters were proud to follow his vision and leadership. Chavez achieved his goals through nonviolent methods. He fasted several times to gather more support for his cause. His longest hunger strike lasted 36 days, which nearly killed him. In fact, his fast resulted in liver failure, which eventually led to his death in 1993. Chavez's largest protest march in California entailed 340 miles from Delano to Sacramento. Hundreds of people took part in this march, which brought much success and support for the plight of farm workers. Even though Chavez was able to gather great amounts of support, the Ernest and Julio Gallo Wine Company tried various tactics to stop his movement, from arresting innocent people to spraying them with pesticides. When the five-year Delano Grape Strike and boycott ended in 1970, the Ernest and Julio Gallo Wine Company had lost $400 million in damages to the boycott, which is approximately $1.9 billion today. Cesar Chavez's work also led to the passing of the California Agricultural Labor Relations Act of 1974, which gave farmers better working conditions, higher wages, decent housing, and quality health care. Cesar Chavez accomplished remarkable things in his lifetime, and his notable work as an activist not only resulted in increased equal opportunities for Latinos, but his legacy also inspired our own leaders today. My organization is the National Diversity Council. Our mission is to, is to promote diversity in the workplace and community. The Cesar Chavez Legacy and Educational Foundation, the mission is community outreach, to educate people, particularly our youth, about the values and legacies of a great American role model. Esperanza works against those injustices in this city and the injustices that happen around the world. The people of Esperanza dream of a world where everyone has civil rights and economic justice, where the environment is cared for, where cultures are honored and communities are safe. We believe it is vital to share our visions of hope. We are Esperanza. He has unequivocally encouraged me to be outspoken against the system of inequality. And unfortunately, that system still persists in our society today. For me, I am an advocate for workplace inclusion, um, something that um, uh, Cesar was also an advocate for equality. I am also the same type of advocate. Uh, his industry was farm workers. Mine is white collar workers in, in, in corporate America today. Um, and so his work has inspired me and many others. Cesar inspired me a lot because to work on issues that are critical to social and economic justice, it is important to know that what we're doing is for building a better world for humanity. He inspired many of us to do the work that we call intersectional work that connects, again, the issues of race, class, gender, sexuality, and to move all of them forward. How do we all connect? What are the struggles in South Africa? What are the struggles in Mexico? So that allegiance, that uh, uh, ability to grow from a group of 100 people to, to make it a million people, to build a movement for justice, that's Cesar's legacy. Cesar Chavez, in a way, was like many of the leaders. He strongly believed in his cause and devoted his life to bring about change in the lives of farm workers. In fact, our own leaders are like Cesar Chavez in many ways. Chavez's legacy was the creation of more opportunities and social justice for farm workers, but his legacy lives on with contemporary leaders who find inspiration on his vision to continue to foster social change for the benefit of their communities. That is, indeed, the trait of a great leader.